W-E-A-F, New York. A pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon time with Kurt Massey, Edna Stilwell, Jeanette, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and radio's red-headed ragamuffin, Richard Red Skelton. gentlemen, do you know what one thing makes Avalon's entirely different from any other cigarette on the market? Do you know why Avalon's stand in a class by themselves? Simply one reason. Avalon's are quality cigarettes that sell for three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Three to five cents less, mind you, a repeated saving that will net you many, many extra dollars in very short order. And certainly you can use a few extra dollars now and then. But bear this in mind, friends. Without knowing, you'd never guess Avalon's cost you less. They're union made from a perfect blend of the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos that money can buy. In fact, you couldn't get finer quality tobaccos in any other cigarette, regardless of price, regardless of brand. Truly, friends, Avalon's offer you advantages, money-saving advantages that you'll certainly want to take advantage of. Why not try a pack of Avalon's tonight? And now for our first splash in the fountain of uselessness, we bring you headline hokum as compounded, cold, cornered, coaxed, and concocted from current questions by that querulous, quixotic, quinduct, Red Skelton. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> what a quinduct. What... <laughs> Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And now for the gossip. News from coast to coast, Washington, D.C., a famous educator said that children should be taught more about birds and bees. I agree with him. I think that the mother should tell the kids about the bees. My mother told me about the bees. <laughs> and when I went into vaudeville, I found out about the birds. <laughs> building booms in the United States. Seems like everybody's building a new house. In fact, I just built a little place out in the suburbs. <laughs> the suburbs. That's French for a long bus ride. <laughs> I built a very modern home, though. In fact, it's so modern, we even have a playroom for the termites. <laughs> Chicago, Illinois. Experts say that women are better drivers than men. They should be. They don't have to look at those hats. <laughs> but, you know, women are getting to be better drivers. The other day, I saw a woman hold out her hand to make a left turn, and so help me, she actually turned left. <laughs> In fact, uh, three cops dropped dead. <laughs> I sent it to Ripley, he sent it back, says, I don't believe it. <laughs> the price of food's going up. You know, that's really a fact. The other day I bought a T-bone steak, it cost me 50 cents. <laughs> For another dollar, I could have had meat on it. <laughs> <laughs> Atlantic City, New Jersey. A well-known group of child psychologists decide that if a child is naughty at the dining room table, do not spank them on an empty stomach. I mean, on a full stomach, rather. <laughs> Turn them over. <laughs> Washington, D.C. The president of the United States called special session of Congress. <laughs> One senator was hurrying to Washington, got indignant because the Pullman porter didn't have his berth ready. <laughs> 
The porter says, how was I to know? I thought senators made their own bunk. <laughs> <laughs> News in the world of sports. Chicago Cubs wins four straight games. That's a misprint if I ever saw one. <laughs> Philadelphia. Tony Galento wins the heavyweight battle from Lou Nova. <laughs> Last night after the fight, Tony Galento was walking up Market Street in Philadelphia. <laughs> A tavern, and one keg nudged the other keg and says, there's the one with legs I was telling you about. <laughs> well, that just about takes care of the news for tonight, so I'll step aside and let Jeanette pour her heart into a song. Sing it pretty, Jeanette, but pretty. <laughs> when we come to our slice of life, a short playlet about things that happen in everyday life, things that you do and that I do. In fact, everybody does. What's this one about tonight, Red? Well, it's about a young fellow that's in love, and he's going to call on his girl. She's fixing dinner, mm -hmm. see? And it's their first time alone. <laughs> you set the scene, Del. All right, Red. <laughs> the place, somewhere in your hometown. The time, 7 o'clock. The girl, Edna Stilwell. The boy, Red Skelton. The dinner, hash. <laughs> The girl is at her house fixing, the boy is at his house drooling. The scene opens at her house. Now, brother, you get out of here. Richard's coming over, and I think he's gonna ask me to marry him. You mean that goon with the haunted look? Well, <laughs> oh, that guy should get married. He's the most married-looking single man I ever saw. Hey, sis. Yes, what I is it? I think the wrong answer to a maiden's prayer is here. <laughs> well, let him in. I'm putting supper on the table. Okay. Hello, darling. How are you, sweetheart? Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Gee, I thought you were Edna. No, I always look this way after I take a hot bath. <laughs> well, look, Edna said we were going to be here alone. Are you going to eat with us? No, I don't think so. Oh, I'll be right out, Richard. Okay, honey. <laughs> 
Well, Roger, you better be going now. You'll be late for your scout meeting. Ah, uh, there ain't no scout meeting. <laughs> ain't no scout meeting tonight. Uh, Besides, I quit the Boy Scouts last week. Uh, what's the matter? My knees got cold. <laughs> Anyway, I think I'll stick around. Yeah. My sister's a nice girl, and I don't like that glint you're trying to get in your eye. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on. Take a walk or something. Gee, you know how it is. Uh, here's a dime. A dime? Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, the price is one dollar to everybody. Yeah. What's the idea? You used to scram when I give you a dime. What's the extra 90 cents for? I just heard about the amusement tax. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's a dime. Take it or leave it. Now, listen, I need a buck. Yeah? And, uh, by the way, who was that girl you were talking to yesterday, huh? Oh, well, it wasn't anybody in particular. Yeah? Sis sure would be sore if she found out about yeah, that. Yeah, she sure... You wouldn't dare. <laughs> you know, you're a regular troublemaker, you are. Gee, you make anything out of nothing. All I did was ask the girl what time it was. Yeah, you must be awful absent-minded. I saw you write it down. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's your buck. Now beat it before I give you a bop on the head. So long, fella. Hope yeah. you enjoy your dinner. Yeah. And whatever happens, keep your chin up. Why? We just put on a clean tablecloth. <laughs> well, so long, sis. I'm going down to the drugstore. All right, but remember, no gambling. <laughs> Oh, hello, dear. Are you hungry? Yeah, a little bit. Gee, how are you? All right. Gee, isn't it wonderful? Alone at last. Just you, me, and my appetite. <laughs> oh, Richard, you're so romantic. Yeah? I hope you like it here. Uh, I want you to act just like you're at home. Uh, you mean I can't smoke? <laughs> Don't be silly. Now take off your coat and let's eat. All right, but I bet we have a tough time trying to digest those buttons. <laughs> oh, Richard. <laughs> You're always making jokes, <laughs> sort of. <Yeah. laughs> now, come on. I hope you like my dinner. I'm not a very good cook, though. Uh, I'll bet you're a good cook. No, not very. Here, taste the coffee and see if it's all right. Okay. Is the coffee good? Just a little chewy. <laughs> hey, what kind of soup is this? That's chicken. Chicken? Yes. Chicken must have walked through with stilts on <laughs> Here, try one of my biscuits. Mm. Did you bake them all by yourself? Yes, but of course, brother had to help me lift them off the stove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'll try one. <laughs> Gee, who is your brother, Charles Atlas? <laughs> Say, what are those things over there? They're stuffed peppers. What? Stuffed peppers, mm. you know, meatballs in solitary confinement. Mm. <laughs> I'll bet you're not enjoying your dinner. You've stopped eating. Oh, gee, I gotta get my breath once in a while. <laughs> Besides, there's something I wanna ask you, if you don't mind. Yes? Well, you know, I've known you for about two years, and, That's... and, uh, as you know, and, and, uh, as you know, I... <laughs> well, there's a woman in back of every man's success, except if she's a fan dancer. <laughs> and, uh, yes. and, uh, well, look, a ring. Oh, an engagement ring. Yeah, on a clear day, you can see the diamond. <laughs> it's beautiful. How do you like it? Yes, but do you think you can support a family? Oh, I guess so. How many's in your family? <laughs> oh, gee, it's starting to rain. Oh, gee, what am I going to do? I catch cold every time I get wet, and every time I get wet, I get pneumonia. Every time I get pneumonia, oh, I... Do stop it a few minutes. No. And besides, you just proposed to me. Yeah, I know. Of course, I've had a lot of chances to get married, yeah. but I figure, why take chances? <laughs> why, only yesterday I was asked to get married, and I said I would. Oh, gee, who asked you? My mother and father. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have to give up... You mean, wait, you, you'll marry me? Certainly, silly. I've been waiting for you to ask me for a whole year. Well, I didn't get over my water on the knee till yesterday. <laughs> oh, gee, this is wonderful. We'll get married tomorrow, huh? Look, I'll go home and I'll pick you up early. <laughs> gee, it's raining awful hard out, though, isn't it? Well, mm -hmm. we have a spare room, if you don't mind sleeping in the attic. Oh, I wouldn't mind the attic. I spent some of the happiest years of my life in the attic. Well, I wouldn't want you to get pneumonia. No, I don't look so good in an oxygen tent. <laughs> well, uh, it is kind of raining, kind of hot. I hope I won't be putting you out. Oh, not at all. I'll go right up and fix it. You wait here. I'll be back. All right. Oh, boy, I'm going to stay on. Gee, I just happened to remember something.
come in. Well, look at you. Uh, Where You're all wet. Yeah, I know. Where have you been in the rain? Well, you said I could stay here all night, so I went home after my pajamas. <laughs> The fellow that wrote Beale Street Blues really had something, and we think that we've really got something here in Bob Strong's arrangement of it. Heading for Beale Street, Bob. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I asked a plumber who was working at my house if he ever smoked Avalon cigarettes, and he said, Sure, brother, I smoke Avalons. They save me plenty of dough. They plugged up the leak that was draining my pocketbook. <laughs> you know, when I go on a job, maybe I forget my tools, see? But I never forget my Avalons. <laughs> yes, friends, millions upon millions of people from coast to coast know that they've really found something in Avalons a cigarette that positively cannot be surpassed in quality, but costs three to five cents less per pack than other popular priced brands. You'll certainly want to give Avalon cigarettes a trial. They're union made from extra select Turkish and domestic tobaccos, masterfully blended to give you a smoke that wins the highest praise from those people who are hardest to please. Now, judging by the quality, you'd never guess Avalon's cost you less three to five cents less per pack, a saving that will mean many, many extra dollars to you. So the next time you need cigarettes, remember, Avalon's give you exceptional quality, outstanding money-saving economy. Buy a pack of Avalon's tonight. The grand voice of Kurt Massey, backed up by the intriguing harmonies of the Avalon Chorus in one of the sweeter melodies of the day, If I Had My Way. If I had my way, dear, forever there'd be, there'd be a garden of roses for you and for me. A thousand and one things, dear, I would do just for you, just for you, just for you. I'd build a garden of roses for you. If I had my way, we would 
would never grow and sunshine I'd bring every day you would rain all alone like a queen on a throne if I had my Like a queen on a throne, if I had my way, if I had my way. And now we come to the third movement in our script tease, the Send Out Skelton Service. Now, if anybody wants a day off, they send for Skelton. This week, it's a golf pro who's taking a day off while our juvenile jughead takes his place. We pick up Edna Stilwell and Red as they approach the Not Shore Golf Course. How do you think my car runs? I've often wondered. Yeah. <laughs> you ought to put two handles on this thing and call it a wheelbarrow. Yeah, well, here we are at the club. Stop blowing your horn. That's the brakes. Well, grab your club, Dub, and get ready to give some golf lessons. Uh-oh, looks like rain. Well, I'll have to get a caddy to carry these things. Oh, here comes a caddy now. Well, are you a caddy? Well, I ain't a carpetbagger. <laughs> Thank you, Lee, the golf club toter. Oh, goodness, yes, Mr. Skelton. I'm just a pasture pool porter. <laughs> And do these scamps make me tramp? I get the hardest job. It's all good experience, but in my case, experience is the greatest torture. <laughs> well, keep it up, Archie. You'll get there. Oh, sometimes I wonder. <laughs> I keep my nose to the grindstone, my ear to the ground, my eye on the ball, my shoulder to the wheel, and hold my future in my hands, and heavens above, if opportunity ever knocks on the door, I'll be too busy to answer it. <laughs> I'm here to take a uh, golf pro's place today. You know, are you surprised, Ricky? The golf pro's place? Yeah. Am I surprised? Oh, I certainly am. But I knew it was you, Mr. Skelton. You did? Just as soon as I saw this car drive in here and stop with a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, first sucker, I mean pupil, is a guy by the name of Phil T. Luker. Phil T. Luker? Mm -hmm. Why, he's that millionaire eccentric. An eccentric, eh? Well, they call him eccentric. Mm -hmm. But if he didn't have $10 million, he'd just be a screwball. <laughs> and believe me, he belongs in an eccentric asylum. Yeah. Do you know what he goes around this course in? The low 80s? No, his low undies. <laughs> well, I'll go get him for you anyway, Mr. Scout, right away. Okay, Herky. Boy, that shower is coming up fast. Well, I guess I'll take a few practice through it swings. Watch, Edna. Notice my form. Your form looks like two sticks stuck in a potato. <laughs> my golf form. Notice my back swing. It sure swings. Yeah. I mean the club. I'm just taking my stance now. I'll wiggle around a little bit. The way you wiggle, it looks as if you had ants in your stance. <laughs> oh, here comes my pupil. Hey, that guy looks two years older than McPherson's family's golf ball. Well, here he is, Mr. Skelton, Mr. Phil T. Luker. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Luker? Quiet. Quiet while I'm putting. Okay, but... Putting? You haven't even started to play yet. I'm putting this cigar in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
Oh, I was uh, pretty good out here yesterday. Got a home run. Oh, that's what... A home run? <laughs> yep. Batted the ball way over there to tall grass and run all around the course before they could find it. <laughs> well, first I'm going to teach you how to hold the brassy. I'd rather start by holding the caddy. Yeah. The caddy? That's not a golf club. I know it. That gal's a caddy, ain't she? No, that's Miss Stillwell, my secretary. <laughs> Howdy. Pretty neat little package. Well, just remember, you're no parcel postman. <laughs> well, now let's get on with this first golf lesson here. Now, look, you take your stance, you bring your club back like this, and... Uh, whoa! I hit it! I mean, uh... <clears throat> Yeah, it's pretty good. It went right out of sight. Don't look now. But if you move your left foot, you'll kick it. Yeah. Well, no wonder I can only drive a few feet at a time. <laughs> this is my Sunday driver. Let me try it now. Quiet. Okay. Look at that thing go. About 240 yards. Right oh, up on the green. Oh, what a beautiful drive. My <laughs> oh, well, look at the thing's rolling right up in the cup. Let's hit, hit, hit. About two inches from going in the hole. Shucks, missed it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go. Uh-oh, it's starting to rain. Yeah. Let's run for the clubhouse. Ah, right, go on. What are you, a little afraid of a little rain? It ain't gonna hurt you. A little rain? Yeah. It's raining pitchforks and hammer handles. Oh, stop exaggerating. Ooh, what hit me on the head? A hammer handle. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Okay, Bye. go ahead. Come on, we'll play this course, rain or no rain. Wow, 16 holes in this storm. Look where my ball is. Seven strokes already, and boy, what a lie. You're telling me. Yeah. Okay, okay, nine strokes. Say, how many uh, shots did you take getting out of that sand trap? Eight shots. Yeah. Four with mashy and four shots of rye. Yeah. <laughs> Achoo! Oh, good heavens, I've catch it by death of cold. <laughs> cold, eh? Would you like a snort, son? Oh, well, I, I guess a good snort wouldn't hurt me. All right, here's a handkerchief. <laughs> now, quiet. Quiet while he hit my ball. I said quiet. Oh, that was a thunder. <laughs> I think I'm on the green. I'm going to run on up ahead there. Say, Herky, this guy's kind of tight, ain't he? Oh, heavens, they say when he pays off, he never pays off with anything but $50 bills. Yeah? Well, there's only one drawback. What's that? He never pays off. <laughs> well, I'm going to settle this right now. Uh, hey, Mr. Luker. Yes? Uh, I'd like to talk to you just a minute. I charge $10 a lesson, and it's uh, pay as you play. Yes, well, don't forget I'm playing very poorly. Yeah. Oh, my stars, look where the balls are. A dead stymie. Well, drag the thing away and bury it. <laughs> Boy, look at this golf course. It's flooded. Why, you can't see anything but this green. Say, tomorrow they'll be looking for the missing links. <laughs> say, the water's coming up higher and higher. Oh, I'll say that water is. Well, we'll be drowned like rats in a sand trap. No, wait a minute. I got an idea. I know how I can save you. Here, take your putter. Now, putt. 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 Okay, gang, I'll just step into this outboard motor boat and we'll putt, putt, putt right out of here. Well, that finishes another one. It's about time for us to make way for the NBC Good Chime Charlie. <laughs> yes, Red. <laughs> and don't forget that next week we're going to broadcast from the Auditorium Theater here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, for special guests, we're going to have about 3,500 delegates to the American Legion Convention. Oh, boy. You know, I got a warm spot for the Legionnaires. Yeah? I guess it's because my uncle was a doughboy. He was, Red? Yeah, he was a cook in the Army, you know. He was wounded twice. It was a good thing the war ended when it did, or those fellows he was cooking for would have killed him. <laughs> Well, good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Remember, friends, during the week when you ask for Avalon cigarettes, 
Don't forget your change. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents plus city or state tax. Be with us next Saturday evening at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. Del King speaking. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-A-F, New York, 9 p.m., B-U-L-O-V-A, Bulova Watch Time. Bulova, masterpiece of fine watchmaking.